If you were handed $1 billion to start a company, would you know how to? If the answer is no, then perhaps you would learn a thing or two from exactly how the richest man in Africa, Aliko Dangote made his money. Welcome future millionaires to another episode on this channel. If you are new here, you are welcome to Millionaire by 25 YouTube channel. The best place on the internet to get inspiration and information about wealth, business and making money online. Our goal on this channel is to bring you steps closer to your dreams of becoming a millionaire. Be sure to subscribe so that you can be informed when we put out new amazing videos like this one. So, without wasting any more of your precious time, let's get into the video. If you have not checked out our video on the top 10 richest people in Africa, I suggest you check that video out before coming back to this one. Because in that video we have covered a little about Aliko Dangote already. As we all know, Al Haji Aliko Dangote began his first business which was a trading company in 1977. A trading company is a company that sells commodities or services mostly to other business owners. Much like wholesalers and retailers. He imported commodities from outside the country and sold them in Nigeria. His startup capital was $3,000 which he borrowed from his uncle. Today, his business is way more than a trading firm, it is the most valuable conglomerate and employer of labor in the entire West Africa. It is a point worthy of note that he paid back the debt in three months of starting his trading firm. What does this tell you? So many other people would have gotten bankrupt. But why didn't he? If I, for instance, was handed $3,000 to start a business today, sure I may succeed, but I don't know if I would be able to pay back the entire loan in three months. One excuse I can give, however, is that the competition in the market now is way more intense than it used to be in 1977 when he started. However, I still give a lot of credit to Dan Gote and I would attribute his profound success to a few key major factors. Number 1. His career. Dan Gote obtained a bachelor's degree in business studies and administration at the Al-Azhar University, Cairo. And in a survey conducted on world millionaires and billionaires, business administration is among the top 10 degrees that occurred most frequently alongside politics, accounting, finance, computer science, and even business administration. There are some millionaires without a degree, but this makes less than 1% of the total number of millionaires we have in the world. It would be safe for me to assume that the above professions have been the most lucrative in the past century and Dan Gote had one such degree. So what did he do? He went straight into the business world and never turned back. Number 2. Initial Wealth and Influence Alhaji Aliko Dangote is the great-grandson of Alhaji Alhassan Dantata, who at that time was the richest man in West Africa. That was how he was able to acquire such a huge loan. I would like to think that if Dangote was from a poor home, getting the loan would have been impossible. Even going outside Nigeria to get a bachelor's degree would have been difficult as well. Influence also played a huge role for him in my opinion, because with an already big family name and circle of family friends who are also wealthy, it would be easy to get initial clients. Maybe he used his influence or not. I cannot say for sure. But, it is a vital game changer especially in the early stages of a business. Number 3. Ingenuity. I think Dan Gote is a genius because if he wasn't, he wouldn't have succeeded. A lot of entrepreneurs have tried entering the market with little success. So for the fact that he has continuously expanded his business for the last 40 years, we have to give him credit for that. Number 4. Love for his craft. Dan Gote said it himself that when he was very young, he usually bought cartons of sweets to sell to his classmates just to make money. At that age, he already loved business, and that love didn't die. So many other really successful people have been noted for having a passion right from childhood and keeping it alive until adulthood. So, make sure you do not let go of that passion of yours. Number 5. Perfect Timing. Dan Gote entered the market at the perfect time. Let me explain this using Bill Gates. Bill Gates began Microsoft at the infancy of software when there were fewer competitors most of whom did not even completely know what they were doing. If Bill Gates were to be born today and had to start a company afresh, it would be a little bit more difficult because the competition today is higher. So, Dan Gote entered the market early, and today, the majority of his revenue comes from cement production. In a third world country where a lot of development still has to happen, it makes a lot of sense to go into cement production, because most civil engineering structures require cement. It is only recently that steel is beginning to overtake the use of cement. And that is why steel manufacturing is a very good entrepreneurship space to get into against the next five to six decades. 
I think it is also worthy of note that he was awarded a cement plant by the federal government and further built a multi-million dollar cement manufacturing plant in 2005 with $319 million of his own money and a $479 million loan from the World Bank International Finance Corporation. However, Dan Gote is a disciplined businessman who reinvested most of his profit back into his business. This is one of the factors that made his business grow very rapidly. Some other entrepreneurs may have done it differently and hence get different results. I think his biography would be an interesting one to read. Even though he didn't come from abject poverty, there are a lot of people who would be born in his shoes and yet not grow a business as significant as the one he grew. A few of Dan Gote's favorite quotes include. Youths of today aspire to be like me but they want to achieve it overnight. It's not going to work. To build a successful business, you must start small and dream big. In the journey of entrepreneurship, the tenacity of purpose is supreme. When you are raised by an entrepreneurial parent or grandparent, you pick that aspiration. It makes you much more aggressive to think anything is possible. I think it is also important to mention that he is a philanthropist and has donated millions of dollars into non-profit projects. In the next video of this series, we will be covering Folorunsho Alakija and her journey to the top. Remember to like this video, because that's a way to encourage us for the work we are doing. Check out this video on the computer skills of the future if you haven't already. We will see you in the next video. Stay safe, and stay energized.